joining us. Over to the other big story we are tracking in response to PILs. Seeking uniform civil code, the central government has told the apex court PILs are not maintainable. The centre told the Supreme Court that it cannot direct the Parliament to enact a law and hence the six PILs filed by the likes of Ashwini Upadhyay, Lubna Qureshi and Doris Martin should not be entertained. Earlier, the Supreme Court had urged the centre to clarify its position on the possibility of introducing UCC throughout the country. Now, the petitioners in the case claim that UCC has always been used for religious appeasement. They're seeking a panel to begin with by the centre to prepare a draft on UCC, seeking uniformity in personal laws, regulating divorce, adoption, guardianship, alimony, succession and inheritance, amongst other things. Similar pleas are also pending before the Delhi High Court. Here is more of what the government has said in court in its response. First and foremost, the law ministry has said the Supreme Court cannot direct Parliament to enact any law. It added PIL seeking UCC must be dismissed as non-maintainable. But it didn't reject the idea of UCC. Government said given the importance and the sensitivity of the matter, an in-depth study of various personal laws is required. It informed the court that the 21st Law Commission undertook this detailed examination by inviting representations from several stakeholders. The Commission's term though ended in August 2018 and now the matter will be placed before the 22nd Commission. So there's already been a delay of four years. The Law Ministry went on to outline the purpose of Article 44 though, which refers to the UCC, saying the article is aimed to strengthen the object of a secular democracy. Indian citizens following different civil laws is an affront to nation's unity. The centre clarified that it will wait for a report by the Law Commission on the subject and post that the government will examine the need and hold consultations with all stakeholders. I also want to quickly outline the BJP government's position on the contentious issue over the last few years. Now, in July 2016, the then Law Minister had reiterated that consultations will be held with all stakeholders before moving towards UCC. Also, the government had added that the state has a duty court to implement UCC. So it has been firmly behind this idea. Even in September 2020, Law Minister had said that the government is committed to honour the constitutional mandate. Current Law Minister Kiran Rijiju in July 2022 said in a parliament response that since the matter is sub judice, no decision on UCC has been taken yet. He added though in a debate that everyone knows what the government's position is on this matter. And in court too, the government has said different civil laws are an affront to nation's unity. So, it is all for it, then why the continuous delay? And finally, what is Article 44? It lays down that state shall endeavour to secure a UCC, a uniform civil code, for citizens throughout the territory of India. Now, what is UCC? It's basically one law for all religious communities in personal matters such as marriage, divorce, inheritance, adoption, etc. This is one of the directive principles of state policy. It is not enforceable by courts, but the principles laid down as directive principles are fundamental in governance in India. So the big question we ask today, will UCC ever become a reality? Is the government buying time? Is it serious about it? Because it's already been eight years and no movement on it. Kapil Sankla, senior lawyer, Supreme Court is joining us. Desh Ratan Nigam, also a lawyer himself, leans towards the RSS. Arun Anand is consulting editor, First Post. Molana Masoodul Hassan Kazmi is a Muslim scholar joining us on the show. And I do thank all of you gentlemen. Uh, Desh you. Ratan Nigam, since you do lean towards the RSS, I want to understand. RSS, of course, is the fountainhead politically and ideologically of the BJP. The BJP has been in power at the centre for eight years. Do you sense that even with the wide... Uh, unprecedented majority that the BJP government has, UCC is just too hot a potato for it to, ha to touch. It just doesn't want to do it. It wants to possibly delay it as much as possible. No, I don't think so. You know, uh, brute majority or, uh, you know, comfortable majority or by whatever name you may call it, 
does not give a lesson license to anybody to bulldoze any policy hmm. so any policy which comes has to be studied researched well thought of and consultation with all these stakeholders is absolutely necessary so well, it's not as, as simple an issue but it's a complex issue and therefore the most appropriate forum is the law commission and therefore the national law commission should go into the question because government so the national law commission as i read out the last term ended in 2018 so that 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 study was for a different period and what are we sitting as, on it for no no that's what i'm saying the that law commission's report has become quite old lot of water has flown and therefore new requirements and new you know people as the society has moved on what do they think and the latest update is absolutely required and therefore in my opinion then there will be issue of tribals where the tribals have to be included because they have a separate culture altogether hmm. so that aspect has also been taken into account i get all of it i am in no way suggesting that ucc is a simplistic issue it is a complex issue but my <clears> point <throat> is by now this is one of the fundamental issues the bjp bats for it's had majority for 8 years why has it not come to a report yet then we the government can move forward and invite consultations invite stakeholders put a draft in parliament but they're sitting on it see the fact remains that the best forum is the uh, law panel that has to go into it government cannot do day to day such kind of you know complex and specialized work Fair enough. and therefore a specialized body and where they are trying to put it should be the best forum and the but they could report, make it time bound we, right why is we just going on and, i mean for the last 8 years i've heard the same response i read out the response since 2016 from the law ministers of the country it's the same the, thing we want consultations fair enough we want to bring everyone together fair enough we want to bring it fair enough but when is it going to happen but let me take that question to arun anand arun anand what do you think <clears throat> is it just too difficult an issue for the government to tackle it will do it possibly at a different time when everything else is in its control you see caa hasn't been implemented farm laws repealed then you have this ucc issue is there a lack of will or just political climate no i don't think there is a lack of will you know the shivani these are complex issues and uh, 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 actually you know the debate on this uniform civil code uh, this whole thing started in the constituent assembly on 23rd of november 1948 one should basically go and look at that that debate and that you know resolves lot of issues but as far as this government is concerned see there are 25 crore muslims in this country hmm. and a section of them doesn't want basically uniform civil code so until and unless there is a broad consensus over it you cannot you know push down the throat <laughs> a law hmm. so uh, the government has been trying to do it but it has been there has been a major stumbling blocks uh, in terms of you know the a very conservative muslim leadership which has been opposing it hmm. and uh, i think that is and that uh, i also want to bring in a point see it is not uniform civil code is less of a legal issue and more of a social legal issue so until and unless there is a progressive leadership which emerges from within the muslims i don't think you know it will be very easy to you know implement it it can create you know lot of acrimony so they, when you bring in a law you bring in a law basically for the welfare of the larger society you don't bring in a law to create acrimony no i don't so, think that the we are there where a law can be brought in my point is that where is even the law commission's report on it why has even that not come and where where is the very clear articulation from the government that okay this is what we envisage when we talk about ucc all of that could have happened by now i mean as you very rightly said mr anand this is not a new debate we've been debating ucc since 1948 we know the pitfalls we know the benefits so what's taking so long to at least uh, articulate your vision for it shivani ji har cheez ko karne ka ek samay hota hai mujhe lagta hai exactly anand ji main yahi bol rahi thi samay ki baat hai so like this government you know uh, i am no spokesperson of the government but you know this government has you know uh, article 370 so you can say ki 2019 mein article 370 hataya to 2014 से लेके 2019 के बीच में क्यों नहीं हटाया सो नो देर आर सर्टेन गवर्नमेंट आल्सो यू नो कैलिब्रेट पोलिटिकली आल्सो बट विल बी देयर देन देयर इज एन इंटरनेशनल सिचुएशन यू हैव मोर देन 50 मुस्लिम कंट्रीज विद व्हिच इंडिया हैज टू डील सो नो देयर आर लार्जर इश्यूज सो हर चीज का एक समय होता है बट आई हैव आई हैव क्वाइट क्वाइट आई एम क्वाइट कॉन्फिडेंट that ultimately you know ucc uh, they are going to bring in some of the bjp governments like uttarakhand government so they have yes. so they have already initiated yes. might call it you know doing it from the back door ki kaan idhar se nahi to udhar se pakda 
जो है बट देर कमिटमेंट इज देयर आई थिंक ग्रेजुअली बेसिकली दे विल मूव अड एंड दे जस्ट डोंट वॉन्ट टू डू इट यू नो बाई काइंड ऑफ यू नो बाईंग Although yeah. I do say I do say that it is going to be best if everybody is on board but you cannot get 100% consensus in a country like India or f- for that matter in most countries even homogeneous countries 100% consensus or no issue exists certainly not an issue like UCC which is contentious to begin with Kapil Sankla I want to understand from you legally speaking uh, what are the limitations that bind any government even though this is a directive principle uh, in implementing a UCC because there are of course uh rights to equality or right to religion which are exist at fundamental laws that sometimes are seen in contradiction to this directive principle you are absolutely right so the concept of directive principle was it's a kind of a direction or a road map to the state to go ahead uh to protect the citizens and for betterment of the country but those are directive in nature they cannot be mandated in nature that's one the difficulty that arises is as the gentleman before me said that there are a lot of geopolitical issues that come in the geopolitical issues could be international they could be national they could be internal external whatever they are and so uh, over the years there has been uh, one has been vigilante justice where people have risen the second is when the courts have come to the rescue and probably you know directed and made an interpretation etc there have been uh, the bano case and there are many other cases like that Uh, in this case, for example, uh, somebody files a PIL, goes to the court, and says that under Article 32, please ask the the centre to come up with this law. Files a writ for mandamus, and the writ, as you rightly know, are to protect your fundamental rights. Mm. And the uh, and and the government comes and rightly says so that listen, this is the work of the legislature. The legislature will do its job. Please give us time. You cannot mandate the government to pass a law or bring about a law. So that's. so the difficulty that you face right now is that when a law is passed it has to stand the test on the floor and for that as somebody said that there are many stakeholders involved and there has there is some kind of threat perception yeah. to a certain community that certain rights certain uh, sops that have been granted to them under their uh, personal laws may be taken away etc and so those issues have to be bet as well because it will be challenged and challenged again and then the difficulty that we would face is that somebody would say that this has been shoved down the throat of the citizens or the minority or whatever you have but having said that but what's really Kapil, i want to understand from you are, legally speaking are there any yes. hurdles or challenges to a ucc yes there are the challenge is this that from time immemorial even pre independence era it was clearly stated by political and other masters that they will not enter into the domain of personal laws this was specifically to protect the minorities hmm. but it was also to protect so to say the personal laws of various factions that comprised india yes. so the difficulty even when the constitution was being made and even at that time when at the time of drafting our constitution constitution dr uh, b r ambedkar wanted to bring in uh, you know uniform civil code this was yeah. fought to the nail and the difficulty again was not just not just for muslim side but in, in as well as from the hindu side because yeah, at that I time yeah i think dr. there are sections Bhedkar amongst the hindus are that are not for the ucc at that time is what i'm saying even but today, over the years what happened is that not only there was a lot of transformation internally in hindus hmm. but also there were various guidelines and judgments and laws that were brought in and the hindu laws were structured so to act to create an equal balance between men and women etc and you know way back from 2005 when the honorable supreme court also stated that women have equal co-parsonary right etc but that kind of development has really not taken place in the minority laws mm. i mean you see what had happened once the triple talaq was raised I mean, there was so much of hullabaloo when other issues were raised there was so much of hullabaloo because the stagnation that has crept in and and the desire not to change the will not to change that has that that is there so possibly is a lot of roadblocks uh, a lot of hurt. the need for a ucc if it's so unacceptable could be bridged with certain progressions being made in uh, uh, you know other religious laws as well the same that uh, hindu religious laws personal laws have seen but let me bring and in molana masood here that's what been done by supreme court isn't it as i said in yeah. the triple the law case for example giving you but that's example. like drip and drabs right we we need something which is structured and happens possibly uh in on an on a larger scale in one go but molana masood i want to bring you in the government repeatedly says that they want to bring all stakeholders together and do wide consultations before they even think about ucc 
do you not feel that sections of the muslim community especially the clerics must also have an open mind and contribute to this discussion instead of outrightly rejecting the idea of ucc yes yes uh, shivani ji uh, very rightly you asked the question uh, give me uh, appropriate time to explain Go this question the uh, motive uh, the motive i propose ucc is unity integrity and empowerment of the women and to liberate women from regressive practices this hmm. is the motive of the ucc hmm. number 1 i want to ask the question from the all the ucc champions the when the motive given this motive will will you include uniform law against cow slaughter across the country a hindu undivided family law but sir cow slaughter is not comparable to personal law, laws the tax can i yes, not, not even a legal part of the religious practices the motive motive to uniform the country motive to motive to unite the country in personal motive laws to integrate the country just, so just the same such, way we have same yes, criminal no, not, laws but, same personal civil laws no, no, must no. apply that's all hindu undivided family hindu 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 undivided family law is also personal law ma'am yes sir of course it why is why don't you that also will get this? of course it if is nobody is denying that if and why then muslim says or number 2 okay. number 2 number 2 in nagal nagaland hmm. we have given religious cultural and customary concession to the all people of the nagaland and uh, nagaland and state and uh, far states of the eastern eastern state of the country is eastern region of the country mm -hmm. we have given the cultural concession religious concession are you going to get away with all this concession or not mm -hmm. if if the answer is yes Muslim will be very happy if you say if and but Muslim will say will think that they this are going to target them. This is just to target them. To target okay, so let me ask you a, a follow-up question then. Manana Masood, it is a given that if uniform civil laws come uh, and there is a court, and first of all, this pertains to only specific aspects of personal life. It doesn't go into right to eat, right to pray, right to religion. It just talks about uniformity. in adjudicating uh, once again sir it just talks about uh, no, uniformity no, in adjudicating marriages divorces adoptions alimonies inheritance etc it doesn't go into your personal choices of other kinds we must make that distinction so it is a given that it will apply to all no, why, why then what is the problem we should not be selective then we what is the problem it will selective. apply to all that is a given the selectivism so what is the selectivism here so that is why i am asking but that is why i am asking are you going to get away with the religious concession given to the people of the nagaland yeah and of course this? eventually all of those are questions going will to have to be answered but let deshratan nigam respond to that i think you did bring no, no, up no. the issue of tribal they yourself they are not answering they are this is a complex only, issue and even amongst the hindu community the there are sections that do want to preserve their personal laws so deshratan nigam given all of that do you think that ucc can ever even be a reality Yes, it can be in due course of time. And secondly, let me tell you, North East is not about religion; it is about culture, and uh, it's not about personal laws out there. They have a particular culture, and it has to be dealt with separately among all the tribals. And therefore, Nag Nagaland is a tribal state and has to be dealt with accordingly. Now, somebody said that these are only directory in nature. Supreme Court is very, very clear. Once a policy is made by the government, then it becomes. enforceable in a court of law and it has upheld it many times say for example article 46 of the directive principles promotes the educational and economic in interest of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes so there the reservation and everything has come through and it has become a part of various laws prohibition of cow slaughter various laws have come because they were a part of uh, our directive principles prohibition of consumption of in intoxicating drinks bihar you recall is a state where you cannot you know sir, intake the cows the across the country and sir. therefore ek minute shant ho jaye shant ho jaye main dusre issue pe hu abhi therefore these can be enforceable in a court of law if government wants to implement a particular policy so they have a much higher status uh, not merely directly but enforceable as well 
if the government makes a law through a legislature or is Now, it going yes. to be simpler if states actually ruled in this regard as arun anand was saying kaan idhar se nahi udhar se pakad lo arun anand i have 30 seconds left what do you think uh, given that you know uh, we do have virtually all communities having some sort of discomfort with ucc we are a unique diverse country where we do have you know various sections within communities as well should we give up on the idea of ucc and instead just look at maybe rectifying certain very grave anomalies like the tri- the instant triple talaq and not really be hell bent on ucc per se uh i think uh, we should not leave the idea of ucc because if we would be leaving that then we would be doing away with the uh, dream of dr b r ambedkar because it, it was dr b r ambedkar who was one of the most fierce votary of bringing mm. in uniform civil code so uh, if we consider him to be the father of indian constitution and if we want to carry forward his dream then ucc implementation is must and i think it will come in due course of time the only problem is uh, i saw my uh, friend from the muslim community and uh, i have been witnessing these debates you know whenever you ask a pertinent question instead of answering the question they ask the counter question and i think the worst sufferers the women in the muslim community they need to have a voice and their voices should be brought forward i okay. think then we will have much greater clarity i've yes. run out of time though i do thank all of you for joining us let's see exactly what committed actions and incremental actions the government takes to make this a reality if this is indeed a stated objective of the government of the bjp in power at the center i'll slip into a very short break on the other side we'll get to the day's biggest stories